Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to my first vlog. See how this goes. So, I know I've been missing for a while, a few weeks, but I'm back and I promise to do better with uploading weekly videos again. Now, if you follow any of my social media pages, you would notice that I posted a photo of an item, some people knew what it was, some people didn't, and it had two questions on it. The questions were, what is this item called? And did I make it or did I buy it? And I promised to answer those questions in this video. So this video is gonna be about, and I think the title has already given it away, DIY baby items. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. Now, here is the item. And for all of those who guessed that I did make it, you are indeed correct. I made it and it's called a baby nest. There were a few other names that were suggested under the post. Some people said baby cot, baby bed, docker tot. Docker tot is actually a brand, but it's still correct. It is called a baby nest. And as the name suggests, the baby nests in it, the baby sleeps in it. So. You don't necessarily need the insert. I mean, I just made it for extra plush. But what you can really use this for, what it is used for is to put the baby into sleep when the baby is new, small, tiny, fragile, newborns. You can use it for co-sleeping for those of you who plan to co-sleep. A lot of persons are scared of rolling over onto their baby while they sleep. And so it's often not recommended by a lot of medical professionals but persons do use the baby nest to you know secure the child so you could have it in the center of your bed and the baby would be sleeping in here and then you'd be the one on one side and your partner on one side um, you can also use it during the day you can place it in your couch wherever it is that the baby sleeps it can even be in the crib because the baby is really small and you just want to make sure they feel comfortable the baby is used to being in the womb where it's nice and warm and compact so if the baby is sleeping between barriers, so to speak, it kind of gives them that normal comfort that they are used to. And so this has multiple uses. You can even travel with it. So say you're going to grandma's or cousins or wherever, a hotel, and you want to be able to have a familiar place to sleep. This will come in very handy because it's, it's portable. I mean, you can always roll it up, tie it up, put it in the back of your car, and you can take it with you and the baby would be used to this env sleeping environment so it would help the baby to sleep better in new environments now for the care of this baby nest i want to ensure that i'm able to wash it as often as i want to babies do have blowouts and spit ups and if that wasn't a factor you still want to be able to use this and keep it clean you don't want to use it indefinitely without without being able to actually wash it with soap and water and so for the insert I made it with velcro so you can open the end right here remove the sponge and you can watch sponge and case and then when they're dry you can put it back in all right so this is for the convenience of washing you don't even have to take it out but I just wanted to make it so that it can be removed because if it is that you want to change the sponge itself after a while you can also do that easily without having to pick out a seam pick out a thread and then st stitch it back all right i did the same for the actual nest itself let me just untie this so here here's another velcro velcro opening so you can remove the sponge as well remove this piece fold it and i'll suggest that if you have if you order one of these from me you fold the velcro away from the sponge so it's easier to pull this up because if you don't while pulling out it's going to keep getting stuck to the sponge and that's a little annoying so fold the velcro but anyway here you can remove the sponge and you can wash the entire thing you can put it in your washer or you can wash it with your hands i was going to do the same thing for the sides but I didn't bother to do that because the sponge that is used to stuff the outside layer is the small pieces that you'd use to stuff a cushion. And that's gonna be a little more work to take out all the little pieces, wash it and then put them back in. So I just did it for here so you can take this piece out to wash it or change it. 
and you wash the entire thing with the sponge in it then you just let it dry and then you put it back together so this was the first time making this item so I used the measurements from someone else that made it and posted it on the internet so I ended up having to do a little adjustments afterwards because with her measurements for me the end closure was a little too wide I didn't like that so I ended up taking out some of the sponge from the sides and stitching this in so it kind of comes in a little narrower where it ends I didn't like that it was all the way out here so when the baby is smaller you can tie the closure here because it really doesn't need to be open because your feet won't get all the way down here and it depends on how long you intend to use this for there are some of them that they sell that are narrower than it, than this one so it would be maybe about here and by the time your baby gets to maybe two months they can't fit in it anymore i didn't want that either i wanted to use it until the baby either doesn't like it anymore that's assuming that the baby will like it in the first place <laughs> or until the baby just can't fit the baby gets bigger so when the baby gets bigger needs more leg room you can always open this you're free to remove the cards after a while or you can leave it I'd suggest removing them because it might not be the safest thing to have on it but you can open it or you know I could probably make a little closure way to fasten it on you know creativity something like that but yeah you can open the closure so that the baby's legs has more room as they grow but yes this is the baby nest so we're done with this item so the first DIY item I made in preparation for my little one is a baby nest. Alright, whoop to do. We're done with this one. Item number two. Pretty simple. I made some sheets for the crib. <clears throat> for the baby's crib instead of buying sheets. Because you know you have to use up the little talents that God gave you. To save money where you can so yeah it's literally just a simple sheet but it falls under the diy category and so here we are i'm going to be inserting a photo of what this looks like on the crib i'll be going around to that room not today so the next item that was made is a breastfeeding cover and i'm going to be putting it on and showing you exactly how to use this okay so i'm gonna be showing you the breastfeeding cover now some people don't bother to use it i personally know that i'm going to want to use it because say for example you have people over or you're in public and you want to breastfeed without staring eyes some people don't care i care so that's what the breastfeeding cover is for i was gonna i was gonna purchase one but i decided to make it instead and especially so because i wanted something that's very thin 100% cotton so that the baby doesn't get fussy under it when the baby gets hot when the baby's feeding because the baby's actually doing work exerting energy when they're feeding so they tend to get a little warm so you don't want to have a something that's thick thrown some people just use a receiver or a blanket to throw over them some people just use a rock to cover themselves but I really liked um, this design and so I decided to make it so the baby's not here yet so we're going to be making the baby so here's the baby Alright, this is the little baby. Alright, here's the baby. So you'll have the baby breastfeeding like this. We're not ready for the baby, so the baby will just don't let the baby roll out of your lap, okay? Just keep the baby there. So I made it. I made it with adjustable an adjustable strap but you the first time you use it you will actually know what your desired length is so you won't have to keep adjusting it so you can just leave it so I bought D rings at the store and I also bought something called boning which is in here so it gives it this sturdy structure so you put it over your head like you put it on an apron so this is a little too short 
So I'm just gonna lengthen my strap. So the baby would be under it feeding. So it's thin, you know, it's not too uncomfortable. It's not too hot. But the reason, I mean, I have to find the right height, which is still probably not this, the right length, sorry. But the reason for the boning is that a lot of babies tend to get fussy when you cover their face when they feed. So they can't see you and they start getting fussy. Some of them actually pull off whatever you're trying to use to cover them. So the idea of the boning is that, still too, still too long, but anyway, I'll just hold it for the purpose of the video. The idea of the boning is that the baby will be able to look up and see you while they feed. So if you look, it gives it the sturdy structure that keeps it sitting up like a dome or like a roof. So the baby is right here feeding. You can touch the baby, the baby can reach up and touch you if they want, but it still keeps you covered from persons that might be sitting around you or walking by. So you can determine how high you want this opening to be. But the boning is flexible, so you can spread it out a little like this, or you can put it all the way up, depending on if persons are standing around you or sitting. Whatever, you might not even care. I may not care when I start feeding, but at the moment, I think I will care. <laughs> so, this is what the boning is for. I really like the idea of the boning because I want to be able to. It's breastfeeding is often a bonding experience. I want to be able to be able to see my face at all times, and so that's where the boning comes in. And as I said, it's thin. It's hundred percent cotton. You can actually see right through it, and so it will, it will prevent the baby from getting too warm while she feeds or he feeds so that's that for the breastfeeding cover pretty simple pretty easy to make i wouldn't put on a baby like that guys don't, don't judge me so it's pretty simple pretty easy to make and you can determine how how long you want it you can determine the length and the width and you can make it to your liking all right so we're gonna move on to some other items which are not necessarily DIY baby items. They're more like DIY maternity items. These are the maternity outfits that I made for work during my pregnancy. Due to the pandemic, I was only working two to three days per week in office and so I didn't need an outfit for every day. So I made four dresses and four skirts. I made them out of fabric that stretch a lot so that they would grow with my expanding belly. And for the skirt that you're seeing here, it is a high waist skirt that fits above the belly, very comfortable. And I would wear this with different maternity tops. Yep, these are my outfits. We definitely have to make use of the gifts that we have. And so there you have it for all of the DIY items that I have made to facilitate me during and after this pregnancy journey. Dresses and skirts and breastfeeding cover sheets for the crib and the baby nest. These are they. That's it for this video. If I happen to make anything else, I'll definitely give you an update in the next video. There is one more thing that I did make, but I'm not going to put it in this video because it's going to go in my next video. And that is going to be the video which is showing a portion of my maternity photo shoot. So I made the dress for that. So get excited and stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to come back. I'm sorry about my absence, but I'm here now. Remember to like, share, subscribe to this channel and comment below. Let me know if there's anything that you would have done differently while I'm making any of these items. I'm here to hear it and I definitely want to hear what you have to say. If you have any other requests, you can make them below. There is a request for me to do hair videos. I always said that I wouldn't do hair videos on YouTube because there are already so many persons doing hair videos. But I think I'm going to, so you can look out for that as well. That is it. See you in the next one.